This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Are you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. This is a (laughs) sham. No. No. Y'all, just stop. Get real. Welcome to DBL. We are continuing to follow the war in the Middle East. Israel is launching massive airstrikes against Gaza. They are leveling whole neighborhoods, as you can see right here, as Prime Minister Netanyahu has vowed to crush and eliminate Hamas. They are also now dropping leaflets in Gaza. This is important, guys, because it's leaflets that are warning people to evacuate ahead of a suspected ground assault. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is now in Israel and met with Netanyahu earlier. He has condemned Hamas's reign of terror and pledged U.S. support. We're also hearing more personal stories from Israelis who are joining the fight against Hamas. And our next guest is a tech entrepreneur who was living in New York when the war broke out. But he decided to leave all that behind to join the IDF, or otherwise known as Israeli Defense Forces. Please welcome Noi Leb. Wow, thank you so much for being here. We realize you are in the dark um, as Gaza is shutting down electricity. We will work with whatever we have. Go ahead, Erica. Noi, what was going through your mind as you decided to leave your life in New York to fight for Israel? I mean, on Friday night, I received a few notifications that seemed like they were out of a horror movie. You heard about Israelis, innocent civilians being tortured, being killed, being kidnapped, and being brought back to Gaza and the videos that have been posted online by Hamas were just horrifying. They showed me that some people can be worse than ISIS. They showed me that some people can be inhumane. And I didn't even think twice about buying a ticket back and getting to Israel as fast as I could. Well, you got to Israel on Sunday, but you traveled to see your parents before heading to base. I can't imagine. So please tell our audience what that was like for you. I think telling my parents was the hardest part, actually, and I was in New York. Uh, my, we are three boys. My mom already has two boys already enlisted in the military, um, one that's 21 years old and one that's 30. And, you know, I came home because I had to say goodbye to my, uh, my grandpa. I had to say goodbye to my parents, gave them a hug and a kiss. You know, it was, was uh, very emotional, but I had a duty and I had to get back to base, and that's exactly what I did. I appreciate your spirit, but I do want to ask, how do your parents feel about having three sons, and you're always your parents' sons? How do they feel about having three sons fighting in this war? I mean, look, I don't think any parent wants their son or their daughter to be in this war right now. I can promise you that no Israeli parent, with or without their children in the army, is sleeping normally at night. Um, it's a scary situation for parents, but you know, this is our reality. We are faced with terrorists, we're surrounded by enemies, and they understand, even if they don't want to, that we have a duty that we have to fulfill, and that we won't stop until Israel is secure and safe. Amen. No, you, you're a badass, my man, just plain and simple. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, but tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and what you've been seeing since you got back. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of the things that you've been hearing about. I've been seeing parents actually being happy that their kidnapped children are found to be dead because they know that the torture, which takes months or years, it's mu- is much worse than the killings. I've been seeing, I actually stopped looking at the videos because you just can't take it anymore. 40 Israeli babies were found with their heads chopped oh off and God. their body hurt because Hamas terrorists wanted to prove some sort of point and you know what this this we're not fighting against human beings this isn't a a a war this is i don't even know what to call it it's it's horrible it's it's there's no words for it. I absolutely agree. No, I, I am um, a Jewish person. I understand. I'm Jewish. I just want to let you know because I don't know if a lot of people know when you're an Israeli at 18, male and female, all obligate. They have to go into the military. Military is part of Israeli families. I can't imagine what it's like for you to go to war, though, against what I call these Hamas monsters. How do you feel about being on the front line right now? Are you scared? Look, it's not something that I want to do or that my brothers want to do or that my other fellow teammates want to do. We want to be at home. We want to be in the air conditioning. We want to be sitting like you and living our daily lives. But when the security of Israel, of our people, is threatened, when they are kidnapped 
kidnapping, every si over 200 kidnappings and over a thousand deaths, over a thousand two hundred deaths in what a couple days. Yeah, I don't want to be here, but I'm going to be here, and I can promise you that we're not going to leave until every single Hamas member is eliminated. Amen. Wow. I, your strength and your, you are such a powerful person, and it really speaks to so much of your character and the, all the people around you who have opted to do the same thing. But here in America, there's been a lot of talk about the innocent Palestinians who are being caught in the crossfire. What are your thoughts on this? Look, I'm a human being, and both of us know that there's many innocent Palestinians who had nothing to do with the decision to infiltrate Israel and kill these innocent Israelis. I 100% feel for them and agree that they shouldn't be affected by this. But that blame is not to be towards Israel. That blame is to be towards the people who are leading them, Hamas, the people who are forcing them to stay. The blame is to also maybe be in Egypt. Mm. Egypt can open their doors and take hundreds of thousands of Palestinians innocent ones who don't want to fight the war, but Egypt is closing their doors, or they've closed their doors and they haven't opened them. So this blame of Israel defending itself goes on Hamas. Because mm -hmm. I can promise you that if today someone came to your house and threatened your children, you would do the exact same thing that we are doing, and we're just protecting ourselves and our people. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, you know, it's my pleasure to turn over our platform, Daily Blast Live, to you. So do you have any message that you would like to give to the American people? The floor is yours. Just want you to understand that the Israelis, they don't want to be in this war. They don't like war and they don't enjoy going into to Gaza, going up north and, you know, neutralizing all of these terrorists. But this is a duty because we are being threatened against and we have people that are dying. And if anyone in the US or anyone in Canada or in any other country around the world was threatened like we were, they would do much worse. Earlier, someone mentioned that you dropped, we dropped leaflets. I'll tell you more than that. When you can look at all the wars, we call, we drop leaflets, we text all in Arabic saying, hey, this building is dangerous. We are going to bomb it. Move out of your building in five minutes. More than that, we drop a dud bomb. We tell our enemy that we're bombing them. Why? Because we understand that there are innocent civilians who may get hurt. No other in the army in the world does it. No one. So we are doing all we can to help the innocent civilians. But at the end of the day, we have our lives to protect too. And that's what we're going to do until Israel is safe and secure again. Amen. We stand with Israel. We are behind you, Noi. We will keep up with you. Thank you so much for taking even the time to share your message. It's part of the war to spend and time with us and spread this message. We are happy to share our platform with you. DBL Nation, if you're interested in ABLE, you can scan this QR code on the screen right now. It will help Noi's direct military unit that he is in. You can also follow Noi on Instagram, again, at Noi Lieb. Thank you so much again, Noi. Blessings to you. Shalom. We'll be right back. Thank you. That's what it means when you're Israeli and you're 18, and I say female and male, they go into the army, they learn how to shoot, bomb, detonate, remove bombs, take out bombs. If you're 18 in America, you're planning on where to go to your next party, okay? It is a vastly different environment there. It is mandatory. You learn medic training, you learn blood clottage, you learn bandage, tourniquet. All of this is taught to Israelis at 18 and it is mandatory because of what they are taught. If you didn't know too, in El Al in Israel, that's their airport, they don't give you estimated, uh, they don't give arrival times. You know why? Because of bombs. So they get an estimated time of when the planes might land. That's how they just live. And if you are planning on one last thing, blaming Israel for their treatment of what I agree with, innocent Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, please know that in 2005, Israel gave up the government to the people in Gaza and they voted for Hamas to take over in 2007. So they gave up control in 2005. And it's really important, I think, for people to know that. Um, sorry to take over. I just wanted to get that in. Did you guys want to say anything about Noy? Jeff Al? I, I can't imagine what he's, what he's thinking, what he's feeling. It was, it's really inspirational to see people 
so called to protect their people that they leave the comfort, like you said, of his own home. Yeah. Yeah. To, I mean, like, we, imagine what he was doing today, last week. It's just amazing because here in America, everyone's fighting the good fight they yeah. think they are. How many people are going to go back to where they came from, in this case, Israel, and fight for their people? Yeah. A lot of people online are tough guys. That guy we just talked to, that's a tough guy. That's a tough guy. Yeah. Not the people online. That guy. That, that's he, why, like, he ran into the fire. I, that's yeah. why I've never the cared oh about that kind of online stuff. It's, it's not real. Yeah. yeah. With their virtue um, signaling. Welcome back to DBL. Switch of gears, of course, here. Hollywood continues to be at a standstill. Talks between actors in the studios broke down yesterday, killing any hope that the three-month strike would end soon. The two sides are still very, very far apart on issues like residuals from streaming services and the use of AI. Meanwhile, the United Auto Workers have expanded their strike against Ford, shutting down a huge SUV and pickup truck but plant in Kentucky. Also, for the past three days, farm Pharmacists at Walgreens around the nation, you might have been part of this, walked off the job in protest over low pay and major staff shortages. They're back at work today, but hope the company will make changes. It's the year of the strike. Well, this has been coming. This is, I mean, we use phrases like stagflation and your eyes glaze over and your eyes glaze over. And I go, what does that mean? And we go, oh, yeah, that maybe these workers do want to. We talk but we, we talk about stagflation, but then we talk off air about how expensive everything's getting. Mm -hmm. How I went to fast food with, with I almost called him Baby Ford. I got him a kid's meal and a vanilla milkshake and it was $12. But there's stagflation. People's wages aren't going up. So what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. We're going to have weeks of this where it's strike after strike after strike because now, Erica, people can't live. And when you can't live, not working does is the same as working. So what right. do you have to lose? Yeah. Lose. Well, I mean, and we, the customers understand what's happening too. I mean, just the Walmart strike alone. Walgreens. Is, yep. uh, Walgreens, yep. sorry, strike alone is not very shocking. Have you been to a pharmacy lately exactly. to try to get? They are so understaffed. You can't even be upset with the people behind the counter, the pharmacists, because you realize that what are they supposed to do? Like one or two people can only do so much. So the idea that this is hit, like people needing their medication, you have to let people know, and I hope they get what they're asking for as well. I do too, just so you know, the annual corporate profit for Walgreens was $27 billion. For Ford, it was $45 billion. GM, $20.9 billion. Stellantis, $17.7 billion. A lot of corporate profits not showing up within the wages. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, here's my thing. Al mentioned stagflation again. A lot of people don't know what that is, but if you just break it down, a gallon of milk at 100 years ago was this. Everything went up incrementally, right? Exactly. The price of a house. The price of eggs, milk, gas, whatever it is. The only thing that hasn't gone up Tell us. is our income. Thank you. But right. how are you supposed to afford that when big, whatever it is, whatever the company is, right, are paying their stockholders a certain amount? You can't say, hey, we're not going to turn a profit next year because we got to pay our workers a little bit more, and now you're going to lose your money. Why? Now Why can't they do that? Because now you're talking to the one, now you're talking to the rich people, and they don't care about the workers. They care about their money and their stock prices. So once you hit a certain number, no matter what company you are across the United States, you can't lower that to pay your workers more because you got to keep your investors and your stockholders happy. That's where we're at. There there is plenty of money to go around. Rec record numbers are breaking in Hollywood, all over Studio, the place. Right, Studios, right. Studios, they're breaking. They're breaking records. That means the one percent is getting even stronger, and the poor are getting even poor. That's got to balance out somehow. I mean, there's no way if you just do simple math, know anything about economics. Everything is going up, but our wages. There you go. Something's got to change. Say it louder for the people in the back. We'll be right back. On October 3rd, the White House announced a plan to build 20 miles of border wall in South Texas. Several Verify viewers, including John and Brandon, reached out to ask if this is a reversal for President Joe Biden. So let's verify. Did Biden previously say he wouldn't construct any more of the border wall? 
Our sources are the Department of Homeland Security and remarks made by Biden. In 2020, on the campaign trail, Biden told a panel of journalists that as president, he would not expand the wall. There will not be another foot of wall constructed on my administration. Once elected, on his first day in office, he issued a proclamation to pause work on each construction project on the southern border wall. So, yes, President Biden did previously say he wouldn't construct any more of the border wall. However, Biden argues he had little choice in stopping this new construction. In 2019, under then-President Donald Trump, Congress passed a spending bill that earmarked more than a billion dollars to build this section of wall. And CBP said unless Congress cancels these funds, the law requires DHS to use the funds consistent with their appropriate purpose. Since that was never done, the project is moving forward. Biden's Secretary of Homeland Security also acknowledged there is presently an acute and immediate need to construct physical barriers. With your Verify, along the U.S.-Mexico border in San Diego, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. Things are heating up on The Golden Bachelor. I'll never do that again. And we talked with host Jesse Palmer about why it's never too late to find love. Plus, he gave his thoughts on Taylor Swift's romance with NFL star Travis Kelsey. Take a look. Please welcome the host of The Golden Bachelor, Jesse Palmer. Yeah. Hi, Jesse. Hey, good to see everybody. How are you? Good wow. to see you. Great to see you too, Jesse. So when The Golden Bachelor was first announced, some people imagined the contestants to be more like well, the Golden Girls. So what surprised no you shade. the most yeah. about these women? The, the thing that I think that surprised me the most on night one was the energy and the confidence of all the women. As soon as they got out of that limo, these women were absolutely incredible. And I really thought on night one, because this was the Golden Bachelor, we might get some naps throughout the course of the night. You know that first <laughs> night is the longest night in TV. It literally goes from 7 p.m., all the way to 8 a.m. These women partied all night. There was a dance-off party. They literally went to when the sun came up. I have no idea how they did it, but they were having the time of their lives. So I have to ask you, what's the biggest difference that you're seeing in how the older contestants are going about finding love? Are they avoiding the drama and going right for the emotion? Like, what are you seeing? I think the biggest thing is maturity. And I think even more than that, emotional maturity. Um, they all have life experiences. They've lived life, they've loved, they've lost. Uh, and they're applying all of that life knowledge, I, I think, to this experience on the show. You know, normally as the host, I'm the one that's giving people advice on dating, on relationships. Uh, there's nothing I'm gonna be able to say to Gary or this group of women. The Bachelor Gary went against advice from friends to not kiss any of the ladies on the first night. But did this surprise you? What I've seen time and time again, and certainly having lived that experience myself, I know that the moment can take you over. And I think Gary was blown away by the women on night one. I think he knew that he was going to get excited. He was going to have some of those excited feels going into this. But I don't think he expected to meet the level of woman that he was meeting over and over and over again. And so I give Gary a lot of credit because he let the moment take him. Uh, he did not follow that advice not to kiss anybody, obviously, <laughs> on night one. And I think moving forward throughout this journey, he's just being Gary. That's one of the best things I can say about him. But I'm just wondering if you think uh, things might get even more steamy like the other Bachelor cast in the future. Oh, it's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> I think, I, I think, I think one of the me. questions I like, oh, no. a lot of people had in this thing, I think one of the biggest questions a lot of people had in this, too, was, are there going to be fantasy suites? How Ooh. big of a, a part does romance play in this for everybody involved? And, um, you know, I, I think that the romance is something that was very important to Gary in this. It was very, very important uh, to the women as well uh, to find their person and find their partner um, down the road. And so I think you're going to see 
a lot of things start to pick up. I think the emotion's going to pick up. I think the drama is certainly going to pick up very soon. A lot of surprises still in store for people out there watching as the Golden Bachelor unfolds. Mm. Jesse, I love your enthusiasm for this, just like everybody else up here on the panel, but everyone is talking about how emotional the Golden Bachelor is already. Have you been moved to tears yet? Um, I'm, I don't want to give it away, but yes. I'll tell you, <laughs> live it, yes, I mean, <laughs> building up until this season, every time I, I would see that video of Gary's story, and I'm not sure if you guys remember it at the start, sort of his backstory, finding the love of his life, tragically losing her. That that hit me every single time. Before you go, <laughs> you happen to play in the NFL. Go Giants! Am I right? The Giants? Go Bears! Go. You, you are right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> sir. Um, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey have been, you know, you might have heard of them. They're somewhat in the spotlight, blah, 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 blah. Do you think they have found love? And you, have you heard anything on the NFL grapevine? To me, this has just been a win-win for everybody. That's what I, I think for the NFL and for Taylor Swift. Um, and I think for Travis Kelsey, and I happen to think and believe it's it's authentic. Mm -hmm. And I'm very hopeful that, that this lasts a very, very long time. DBL Nation, catch a new episode of The Golden Bachelor tonight on ABC. Also, Avocados from Mexico are partnering with Jesse. They want you to host a better bowl game day viewing party with plenty of guac made from avocados from Mexico. So visit avocadosfrommexico.com for recipes and cool prizes ahead of game day. We will be right back. You're the best, man. Thanks, Thank you so much. Go Gators. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>At multiple Walgreens stores nationwide, pharmacists walking off the job. Not for higher pay, they say, but for health and safety reasons. We're so busy running ourselves ragged. It's like a marathon. And seeing, you know, customer safety be at risk as well as our own. Tammy, who asked us not to use her full name, works as a pharmacist technician at a busy Walgreens in Minnesota. She says she joined at least 10 of her colleagues who did not report for work on Monday. It's very scary, and we're actually getting to the point where it looks like, we, I don't know, like how much farther we can push ourselves. In addition to filling and verifying prescriptions, Tammy and other Walgreens employees say pharmacists and support staff are also managing a high volume of calls, working with insurance companies, and administering a growing number of vaccines. In a statement, Walgreens acknowledges that the last few years have required an unprecedented effort from our team members and that it has been a very challenging time. The second largest retail pharmacy also says it's engaged and listening to the concerns raised by some of its team members and is committed to ensuring that the entire pharmacy team has the support and resources necessary. Last month, CVS pharmacy customers in Kansas City were impacted when workers there also walked off the job to protest over similar staffing concerns. They understand the risks that are being posed to the community that, with these uh, demands on them, so they don't want to make a mistake. According to USA Today, CVS corporate staff flew to Kansas City to meet with organizers and agreed to improve working conditions and patient safety. I don't think a lot of customers understand that we are trying to do our best for them. Walgreens organizers say they don't want to disrupt patient care, but need to take a stand, a sentiment some customers can appreciate. You know, I support workers' rights, and, you know, a little inconvenience for me is worth it. Several Verify viewers forwarded us this text message that says seven women died after inhaling poisoned perfume from a sample they got in the mail. Our viewers want to know if it's real. So... Let's verify. Our sources are Glen Eagles Hospital in Malaysia, the DC Metropolitan Police Department, and a search of social media archives. The warning in this text claims to come from Glen Eagles Hospital, but there's no hospital in the US with that name, although there is one in Malaysia. Glen Eagles Hospital has debunked this viral warning several times, including in this 2013 statement on Facebook saying, we have never admitted or treated such patients and have never been aware of such incidences. We would also like to categorically state that this email did not originate from our hospital. Three years later, the warning resurfaced on WhatsApp, prompting Glen Eagles to issue another statement calling it a hoax that has been around since 2001. This warning is one of several similar hoaxes that are attributed to the Office of Risk Management at the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. 
A police spokesperson tells us the text wasn't sent from them and noted that the Office of Risk Management isn't located at the address listed on the text. So, no, seven women did not die after inhaling poisoned perfume samples. The warning is a hoax. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. We got some great products from our friends at Morning Save. Check them out. Get ready to shop. Steph, what do you have for us today? I'm ready to shop. Hey, Tori. Hey, DBL Nation. I am so excited to show you the deals. As ever, they're fabulous. The first one has got my name all over it. Check it? it out. We've got the Olympia USA Lancer three-piece expandable hard side oh, luggage set. Look at that color. I know, it's amazing. This deal includes one 21 inch carry-on, one 25 inch mid-size luggage, and one 29 inch large luggage. Wow. It's normally, it's $680. Stop. We have got a three-piece set for $139.99. That's saving you guys 79%. Now, I also love this. This is so cozy. Oh, wow. It's the Columbia Super Soft Plush Blanket. You oh. guys, it's amazing. It includes one blanket. We've got it available in three neutral colors and three sizes. Normally, this is $80. No, no, no. Get us to the savings. We've got it for $24.99. Baby. Saving 69%. Now, check out this. Okay, so for all of you that love a smooth face, we've got a two-pack Popsonic Smoothie Hair Remover. Oh. So this deal includes two hair removers. We've got them available in three colors. So we've got this gorgeous blush, white, and lavender. Normally, this is $30. Okay. We've got two for eight dollars. That's saving 73%. Our last product today is the Bob the Pillow Leg Support Pillow. This deal includes one pillow with two covers, so the pillow is designed to provide full leg support, great airflow, and keep you aligned in the proper side sleeping position all night long. What? Normally, this is $109. I mean, that's not even that bad. We got it for $32.99. That's saving 70%. I've never even and seen this. I am super excited to give it a go. Head on over to MorningSave.com, y'all, to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices. Or you can even scan the QR code on screen to take you directly to these products on MorningSave's website. Thank you so much, Steph. Before we go, could Bigfoot be living right here in Colorado? Probably not. It's not. Okay, a woman on a train captured this video of a figure, sorry, wandering on the side of a mountain in the southwest part of the state. She claimed it was six or seven feet or taller. Now she's convinced it was a Sasquatch. Some skeptics say it was either a person playing a prank or a hunter in camouflage. You can't say it's six or seven <laughs> feet, and but you're convinced that it's this. Like, if you're way off like that, then you're not convinced. Tori He's been spending a lot of time in the mountains. I can't stand <laughs> Jeff. Bye. <laughs>
This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking.